Okay. Looks like we have a quote. Yeah. All right, I jotted it down. Lynn, uh, I guess you're taking notes too, so we'll, we'll compare. Yeah, what was that, a marine grade what? It's a 12 volt fan. Oh, the fan, okay, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Just one comment. Just one comment on the fans. I've seen. I've Googled them, and and they are available. I think even through Amazon. Okay. Thanks. But they're very, um, they're very efficient, and they're twelve volt. Uh, that's the nice thing, though. They they move air, and they're quiet, and they're very efficient. Yeah, that's what we noticed. Do you know? Do you know what they cost? I memory says they're about eighty five dollars. Wow. Maybe more. I, I I really don't remember. Hmm. Any other questions or answers? Okay, we're ready to move on to the next one. It's um, I could barely see this here. Is um, Tim and Alice is nineteen forty Linner and. 1963 Safari. Are they on? Are the Weimers? Yes, I saw them on. Yes, the Weimers are on. I see Alice Weimer. I do see them. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are Tim and Alice Weimer, and we live in Oakland, Florida. We have three Airstreams, a 1948 22-foot liner, a 1963 22-foot safari, and a 2004 28-foot international. For this evening's VAC 2020 virtual rendezvous, we'll just be discussing a 1948 liner and a 1963 safari. First up is our 1948 liner. We are currently about a quarter of the way through its complete restoration. One of the first things we did was have a local craftsman weld a ladder style frame for us. This new frame kept the iconic look of the pipe frame that the liners are known for. We painted the new frame with Pour 15, modified the existing wheel wells, and installed a new subfloor using marine grade plywood. All new C channel was fabricated and installed. Next up was getting the frame flipped. Almost there. And she made it, belly up. New tanks, plumbing, and insulation were installed. An entire new belly pan has been fabricated and completed. The new axle and rims have been installed, along with removing the protectant plastic from the new belly pan. We've just removed the interior end caps, and we are currently doing the final detail work that needs to be completed prior to shell transfer. And that gets you up to date on the current status of our 1948 Airstream liner. So as weather permits over the next few weeks, we'll get those final details completed, we'll get that frame flipped right side up, and we'll be able to do the shell transfer. Our 1963 Safari, on the other hand, was a hot mess, and we consider him a true rescue. It took a couple of days, but we got him out of the woods. With a little bit of cleaning, we discovered we truly had a diamond in the rough. The interior was a hot mess as well. For now, the interior has been cleaned as best it can, and here he resides, right next to his older sister, waiting his turn for restoration. Tim and I want to thank everyone so much for watching. We're super excited about this project and can't wait to give you our next update. Safe travels, everyone. Great video. Very oh, nice. Awesome. Wow, you guys are, you guys do it the right way. You have, somehow you have the facilities or you have the, to be able to flip that over and do it the right way. That's. Not many people have those options around their house. That's great. It, it took a little bit of an undertaking. As you can see, the trailer sits behind us right now. Um, it's moved since I did uh, the, the uh, video for you guys. So um, 
as you see where it sits right now, we're working outside in the elements. So we definitely have to um, keep an eye on our weather, which is kind of where we're standing right now. We're, we're in uh, the mode to cover it up if we have to. So just to bring you up to date to what happened today, we're so super excited, is that we actually, our shell transfer today. Um, moments before our virtual rally started, Tim and I both had to uh, literally shut down because we were in the 48 all day. So we did our uh, lift off of the shelf from the old frame and moved the new frame under it. And actually we have a little bit more to go in the back. Uh, the, the shelf still needs to go down a couple more, more inches. We just kind of had to stop in order to participate this evening in this wonderful mm -hmm. virtual event that you guys have put on. But anyway, hopefully soon you guys will see us out there on the road with this beauty. Oh, I hope so too. Can't wait to see it finished up. That's you're on the right. You're on the road there. You're, you're yeah. the home stretch right is coming. Of it, right, right on the other side of the camera is the 63, and then over to my right is our, our uh, 2004. So we're kind of like right in the middle of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you looking for the 1963, or you came to buy it by accident? Um, the 63 came to us by accident. Um, I'm always looking, obviously. Um, I was actually looking for a mid fifties, like that. I would love to have a, a, a mid fifties um, or 53 or so flying cloud. But anyway, uh, the 63 came to us. Uh, we had opportunity to purchase it. We, when we first saw it, we thought that we would buy it and flip it, but we, we bought it, we purchased it, we brought it home, we cleaned it up and we realized what a great layout it has. And we kind of fell in love with it. So, uh, oh, and my neighbors have ducks and chickens. So if you hear that, that's what's going on. I can't, I can't put the ducks up, but, but anyway, uh, th that's how the 63 came to us. It came to us by oh. accident. And um, actually the exterior shell on the 63 is almost in pristine condition. Um, the shell on it is um, even in, probably in better shape than our 2004. So we probably will not polish the 63 just because of all all the panels are almost perfect on it. How did you clean the outside? Did you power wash it? I mean, what, what, what was it? Yes, uh, yes, the exterior was power washed. Um, it's obviously leaking, um, not too bad, but it still leaks. Uh, the previous owner, it, it sat in woods, woods for over 20 years. He had carpet in there and the carpet was cut too long and it rolled, it mm. kind of rolled out the front door. So the rain kind of uh, wicked its way into the trailer plus whatever leaks are going on in it. So what we've done is we've cleaned it as best as we can. Um, we don't want to rip any of the interior out until we're ready to redo it, but anything that's in there we have to save in order to uh, use it for patterns. So um, it, it'll just sit it and wait its turn until the 1948 liner is complete. So will we see the 1948 next year in Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> well, we would love to see it there, actually, but um, you know, we kind of thought we would be finished with the 1948 a year ago, and you see where we're sitting now. So, <laughs> as everyone knows, it it uh, all takes not twice as long, but probably uh, four times longer than what you would yeah. anticipate. For sure. Well, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that you power wash it because I power wash my Bambi and my 85, and people discourage that, and I. I feel, you know, it, it cleans it well and I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And, but I've talked to people that have vintages and they say, oh, you shouldn't power wash them. I go, no. Oh. So I, it works out well. It, it does. I, it, it, it yeah, it right. Well. Real nice. Right. I mean, I wouldn't power wash my 04 and I wouldn't power wash the 48 after I finish it. It was just the, our situation that we had with the 63 and how, you know, it sat in the woods for over 20 years. And we knew we would be redoing it. So just power washing it was the best option we had for the moment. Sure. Wow. Any other questions? Uh, just a comment. I'm Dan Engel from Virginia. Um, and? Yeah, I want to compliment you on the work you're doing. That's, that's difficult work. Uh, and you're doing a first class job. Yeah. Well, thank, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank it's, you. It's mostly, I'm, I'm just the assistant, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's the boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, that goes without saying, of course. Uh, absolutely. Way to go, Tim. 
She's the architect and you're the worker? Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, it takes everybody. Uh, it does, it does. Pretty nice. This is Thank Bill Fisher. Can you hear me now? Hey, Bill, Yo. I hear you. Hey, Bill. You can hear me but can't see me, right? Well, if we flip through, we can see you. No, that's okay. Uh, I, anyway, user error. The I just want to make a comment on those fans. We bought those from West Marine, and they do run from eighty to a hundred dollars. But they uh, articulate in any direction that you want to go, and I believe there are three speeds, and you can manipulate the timer from like three hours to 12 hours of runtime. So it'll turn off in the middle, middle of the night and they are 12 volt. And Bill, the, the, the manufacturer was what? Soroco. Yeah, Soroco. Soroco, okay, got it here. Allison, Tim, your trailer's amazing. Y'all been busy. Well, thank you. Yours too. Oh my gosh, that was. Yeah, the old motivator too. You guys have been our motivation and our inspiration, and you know we're uh, we've got big shoes to fill after um, being with you guys. Uh, Tim and I both know Bill and Candy, and uh, we actually have a couple of PC parts that'll go into the forty-eight that we got from Bill and Candy. So. <laughs> They're, they're a great inspiration to us. We love them dearly. You're doing a wonderful job. Thanks. Thank you. Looks good. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I guess we're ready to move on to um, Lisa and Raj. Hi, uh, you're 1956 Safari. Excellent. It was a lot of work. Um, I mean, Lisa mentioned that it wasn't a whole lot of work, but we've done <laughs> quite a, quite a bit of upgrades. We had a whole new front end put underneath it because it was rotted out. And uh, Todd Ingbertson did a lot of the work up in uh, Colorado, and I highly recommend him. But he said he's we were lucky that we didn't lose the toilet while we were going down the road <laughs> or sitting on it. And, and he sent us a lot of pictures on all the work that he did. Um, it was amazing. And then we had. Uh, like three dented front end panels on the out of the 13 and he took the inside uh, inside panels out and buck riveted all those things in and that was good so we've also replaced the uh, axles and while Todd was doing the front end work we had black and gray tanks put in so and then new air conditioner so it was a lot of work and but it's uh, pretty much in rolling stock now it looks beautiful. I remember seeing it uh, in Virginia. It was very nice. Very nice. So are we ready to go with the video? Yep. Uh, well, we are, Ed, but we did actually skip somebody. So we'll come back to them. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, and before we start this, I want everybody to say hi to Pee Wee. Pee Wee is on. Oh, Pee Wee's on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Pee Wee. Hi, Pee Wee. <laughs> Yeah, he's not on video, but he is on. All righty. We will start the video now. Hello, Vintage Airstream Club. My name is Lisa Sly. My husband and I, Rod Sly, own this 1956 Safari. We bought it in 2016. It was already polished up. All it needed was a little bit of structural upgrades and cosmetic upgrades. So let's walk inside and take a look. We have repainted it. We've replaced the curtains. We uh, stripped off the paint that was on the wood up here. Here's our little kitchen with the original oven and a nice new faucet on the sink. Something unique to these 50s safaris is they have the bathroom up front, which is on the small side. There's our commode, little corner sink, and we've added a shower. So that's a great feature for us. Let's pan around, there's our little dinette. And then when you look in the back, something else that all these 50s safaris came with was twin beds. 
I saw on other older trailers, a few people have polished off their end caps. So we did that as well a few years ago. I think it makes a beautiful effect in the back of the trailer. So we come back here and pan around to the front. You can see the whole trailer. Uh, something we particularly like about this uh, 54 to 56 design is these long bank of windows gives us a lot of light they're also wide open no small rooms it's a wonderful trailer to travel in it's 22 feet long and we've had uh, many great trips in it so I hope to see you all in Nashville next year thanks for tuning in to our virtual rally something else that uh Dale had mentioned, uh, I think it was in our last rally, he said uh, the nice front toilet is so that you can do your job in there and uh, stir the cooking pot at the same time. <laughs>
We rebuilt all the kitchen designed around a bathroom that was done by a cabinet maker. Then the bathroom is uh, my uh, car to go, uh, which it was done for me. And it's has two gray water tanks, a, a black water tank, and uh, and a shower built inside. So that's it. that's inside the trailer. It's a Hawaiian motif with collectibles that we collected throughout our uh, travels. Bye bye. Bye bye. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so, Paul and Nancy, did you? It was all finished when you when you purchased it, or did you enhance it? Are they on? Uh, they were. I uh, yeah, I don't see them right now. Okay. All right, any questions that anybody wants me to jot down for them that I could? Well, this is Bill and Candy Fisher again. Uh, we're number 12 of the flying squad. We got the last one of them to the secret society of flying clouds. <laughs> so, so what's the story behind that? For those that don't know. Well, I think the biggest thing is there's not really a story. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, Patty, you have to ask Patty Reed. She she's, uh, was my inspiration for buying a flying cloud. And uh, there was an older gentleman that had all those made up and for the price of the plaque, I believe it was, you, you could buy the flying cloud squadron plaque and put it on your trailer. And he, he made, I think 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. And we got the last one. So Bill, I heard if you bought the plaque, they threw in the flying cloud. Well, <laughs> no additional cost. <laughs> I, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> we missed that somehow. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other comments? <laughs> okay, so we're ready to move on to um, Steve Doster. Doster, he has a 1961 Bambi. All right. So now we're going into the, the 60 decade. Are we ready? Yep, we're ready. Hello, everybody. Here is 1961 Bambi in San Diego, California. It's hanging out on a nice sunny day. And gonna give you a tour. So you can see we have the Zip D awning. I have my outdoor curtain hanging on top of there. Uh, with matching chairs. Those flamingos just flew in today. Go around to the front. Got two large propane tanks. Uh, some nice privacy window coverings. Cool original Airstream banner. If you don't have a trailer valet recommend getting one of those and this is pretty cool with the original plates that you can read they're still on here this is an electrical outlet I don't use and then uh, have water in that there so we'll go around pick you inside but first this is pretty neat at the original Airstream got the guy riding his bike pulling the trailer the serial numbers made in Santa Fe Springs, California, and then just the original state of California approved for sale. Walk in, and we have solar that was added, one solar panel upstairs, and L shaped batteries are under this cushion. and. Just walk around, run it out of time. 
Uh, bed, this folds out here. Take a look around, awards. Airstream's not very modest, not one of our traits. Fantastic fan. Got some storage there, that's nice. Use a shoe holder as storage. Different things, fire starters. Look back here, kitchen sink. Three stove burner, got a fridge, bathroom with the shower. Um, it's a lot fit in 16 feet. You can go uh, quite some long trips. So really enjoy Airstream and Bambi. Look forward to meeting you all someday. Any questions for Steve? No, very nice though. I have a question, Steve. I have a 61 Bambi. Where did you get the awning? I've been um, wanting to do that. So I'll have to uh, refer to my folks, Bob and Mary Dosker that I'm here too. So they have uh, four vintage Airstreams and uh, they did the actual remodel originally. I don't know if they know, they're sort of looking at each other uh, when they got the awning. Hmm. No? They brought it in 2005. You gotta take yourself off mute, Mom. <laughs> sure. No, she's trying to get off mute. Um, but I don't think it had the awning originally when they bought it in 2005 from a uh, family in Phoenix, Arizona, because they're out in Arizona. And we had the uh... The awning was put on in, um, in Tucson at, um, what's the name of it? Oasis RV, they used to be an Airstream distributor. They lost their distributorship, but they have a whole tassel of vintage Airstreams and they do a marvelous job on repairs. So they put, they ordered the Zip V and put it on. Great. And yeah, Steve and, and we're, now, so we love going to Sedona and seeing the baby in the backyard. Um, so, is, it, is that a pull out awning like a zip D or carefree, or does it just slide on and then you have to roll it and put out the, the sticks? No, it's uh, got no, a frame, so yeah, you just roll it down and the braces are right on the trailer. I don't know if you can go back and look at it, but. Yeah, I did see Traveled that. on the side of the trailer. Yeah, I did see that. Luke installs the, Luke also installs the zip -Ds on the smaller trailers. Right. Okay. There's a great uh, Airstream polishing guy out here in San Diego. So um, he said he would travel if somebody got a couple of trailers together and uh, polish trailers. Uh, just had that done last year. Had a re- uh, repolishing of it. Well, if you can fire out the, the information on that, um, that would be good to publish as far as the notes on a good um, polisher because it looked like he did a really nice job. Yeah, it was super detailed. Really good. He also did uh, the Overlander, right? I think yes, he went out he to just Arizona. did the Overlander for he has relatives in Arizona, so he travels a lot. But he's located in San Diego, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. We would Who like I send to... the in info to? So I just send it to uh, the email on the Zoom meeting? Yeah, that would be good. Is yeah. that Edward Valentine? Yeah, that's me. Okay. And I have a 61 band, he's quite interested. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. Hold on, my system just. Um, okay, we have Joe and Lorraine's 1962 Safari. 
Yeah, it's Joe Peplinski. I'm the historian. Lori's not here on the video with me, but uh, that's my 62 Safari. It was on the Around the World Caravan. And the plan was to finally, after three attempts, make it to an international rally with the trailer. We, we bought it, tried to get it 2013. That didn't happen. That was probably never a good plan. Hope to have it in 2018, but didn't make it. And so we were finally going to make it for 2020, and then they canceled the rally on us. <laughs> so what you'll see in the video is it's not done because as soon as the rally got canceled and the whole COVID thing, I kind of stopped working on it. All right, we ready? Hi, this is Joe Peplinski, the WBCCI and VAC historian, and this is our 22-foot safari, 1962, that we call Kramer, because it was taken on the Around the World Caravan by number 6768, Ralph and Jerry Kramer. There's a little bit of the ghosting of the list of countries visited that is on the trailer. And there's the ghost outline of their 6768 over the front window. This is a very tight storage uh, facility, so I'm not going to be able to get you really good views. I'll give you some close-ups, like the furnace. I've got a modern furnace hidden behind the vintage furnace cover with just that little round exhaust pipe, the only indication it's not original. And it works. I've got uh, a modern water heater hid behind the original water heater cover that's been converted to a swing outdoor. Uh, the only thing is I haven't been able to test it yet because the propane line can't run because there's still some belly pan off the trailer. As I move around, sorry, it's going to move quickly here. There's just not enough room to really get back and give you much of an overview of the outside. I'll give you a quick swing of this side of the trailer. We're keeping the original patina on it um, with the list of countries and stuff. You can't really polish it and keep and maintain that stuff. So, quick tour of the inside. You'll see in, on the inside of the door, there is a list, uh, a bunch of decals that are left over from various places visited, a lot of them on the Around the World Caravan, like there's Munich, Stockholm, and Paris, among others. There's some here from Russia here somewhere. I'm not sure where they all are on the door. I haven't looked at it in a while. Inside, you'll see the front's mostly done. The gaucho cushions are done. I just haven't installed them because I've got to re put new fabric over the front of the slide. Going inside, you'll see the Humphrey gas lamp has been converted to electricity, low and high. I've hidden a, a tank monitor panel. Um, it's only doing the gray and fresh tank. It'll be hidden inside a, uh, the roof locker here, so nobody will know it's there, but I'll know what my tank's got in it. This is being converted to have a gray tank. The sink cabinet and the uh, uh, stove which has been rebuilt will be going in soon I, I wanted to show you the, the modern furnace hidden inside the international oil burner case it all works but it looks original yeah, i'll put that on later in the bed same thing the, the cushions are done i just have to cover the front of the bed slide and then that can go in bathroom is mostly done except for hanging towel bars and toothbrush holders and installing the toilet. Closet doors and that have been refinished. I just haven't put them in. It hasn't been a priority, but uh, they're done. And then the last really big piece of the puzzle on the inside here is the fridge, which has been converted to run a Danfoss compressor and electricity only um, because this was the last year that Airstream had their propane fridges dumping the hot air from the back of the heat exchanger and the combustion byproducts somewhat back into the cabin of the trailer, not vented to the outside. And I didn't want to deal with that. So uh, we were, we've converted to electricity and we won't be doing much boondocking uh, with only one single battery in the trailer, but that's our trailer it would have been in loveland this year sorry it didn't make it um and it would have been done by now probably but covid 19 uh really uh slowed down my progress i've moved on to host projects in the meantime thanks see you at a future international rally with this trailer bye-bye nice beautiful nice uh, too bad thank you it was supposed to be third times the charm, but didn't work out. <laughs> I had a question. Sure. I was wondering about the, uh, you said you're converting the refrigerator. Um, which conversion are you using? 
I actually had the conversion to elect to electric done by a Amish gentleman in Shipshawana, Indiana at National RV Refrigeration. And I believe what he effectively did was take a uh, Norcold um, Danfoss compressor-based fridge and, and retrofit the compressor and the control module to my fridge. I think he did have to have a uh, custom evaporator made to form the, the freezer compartment. Okay. It, it's a, it's something you can do yourself, but when I found out that he would do it for about the same price as I'd have in parts, I decided to have it done. And, and the fridge was also uh, powder coated, so it's got a nice finish on it. Is that what, a mark? What was your original fridge uh, model number? That's a Dometic M50 or M50B. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, Joe, when did, when did you actually pick up the your trail or how did you how did you come across well being a historian i've been into uh, vintage stuff for a long time and i first learned about the around the world caravan in 2007 when one of these trailers went up for sale on ebay and i went and looked at it and decided it was a bigger project than i wanted to tackle at that time and i passed on it but then i regretted that and kept watching for one turning up and in 2011 this one turned up in near St. Louis, Missouri. So I had to drive from Michigan to St. Louis, Missouri to pick it up and it looked like it was in pretty good shape. I thought it would be a very quick six month restoration. And then I got the rear storage compartment open after locksmith could make me a key and found that I could look through the floor into the belly pan and one thing led to another. And uh, it became a, a body on restoration. I had some frame repair done, welding, I had I replaced from about the axle back the floor, the front floor I just hit with penetrating epoxy and shored it back up. So, uh, and it, the, the goal has been to make it look like it just came home from the around the world caravan. It's not gonna be polished. I'm not putting modern things on it. Um, I want it to look just like it came back, although all the cabinets have been refinished. It's very nice looking, especially I like your, uh, your stealthy, um, heater and water water tank that's nice yeah what size furnace did you, did you put in there um the original um international oil burner that had a uh apparently been recalled a number of times and had a reputation for uh exploding was a twenty-five thousand btu furnace i when i went to replace it i wanted to find something that would fit in the original case so it'd hide and I found, unfortunately, since I bought it, they've stopped producing it. It's a, uh, what, what's the name of it? It's an 18,000 BTU furnace. So it's a little bit less, but when I looked at what Airstream was using on modern, modern 23 footers, it seemed like 18,000 BTUs was enough. Um, God, I can't think of the name of it right now. Atwood? It's an Atwood, yeah. Okay. So I think they called it an Everest, but it's also been called by other names. You can get it so it either is direct discharge or you can use duct. So I, I did two ducts. I have I, so I have it blowing out of the original forward and rearward facing ducts in the trailer. Mm. I, I uh, tend to agree with you, Joe. I, I have a 61 on Bambi and I'm polishing it. I'm hand polishing it, and I'm um, I'm, I'm doing it very I'm doing it very slowly because I, I don't want the nickel polish on it. And I, and I have um, come across people that have decided not to polish their trailers. Um, it's, it's an option and you know, I'm, I'm doing something in between. Uh, you know, there's ongoing maintenance. If I didn't have the list of countries to maintain, I probably would consider polishing and at least giving a light polish and let it re-patina. But I'm afraid if I polish that off, it's gone forever. Yeah, no, you don't want to polish that off, no way. That's a good point, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I like the... Uh, We've been in a lot of open houses, a lot of trailers. I've never seen that little lantern uh, electrified. I think that's a great idea. Did you come up with that yourself or did you steal that from somebody else? I've never seen I that heard, before. I heard somebody else had done it before, but I never saw instructions on how to do it. Um, once I pulled the gas controls out, I found a, a taillight socket that had an auto parts drawn because I wanted on 12 volts, not 110, that literally screwed right into the where the gas fitting had been and I ran the wires out and put a switch on it. It was it was really an easy conversion. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's a great idea because who wants to light one of those up? They, they, 
they kind of scare me. <laughs> Especially in the summer. <laughs> yeah, they put out way too much heat. Yeah, they do. All you want is the light. Yeah. 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 Really clever. In the summer, it's it's okay in the fall and spring, but not in the summer. Not in the summer. No. That's Joe, a great sorry. idea. Joe, what is the length of it? You mentioned it, I forgot. It, it's a 22 foot. Um, oh. as it, in difference to the 22 foot that we saw in one of the earlier videos, this is the double bed model. So it has totally different layout, totally different uh, window configuration than the twin bed model of the same year. Yeah, I like the bathroom in the back. I, 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 I tend to gravitate to that. I like the bathrooms in the back. Hey Joe, this is Lee. Sounds like it'd be a nice little article, tech article for the newsletter coming up. Could you do that? I'm just doing that lamp conversion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah. Heck yes. I could probably do a, a, a quick little simple one on that. You, you know, as the historian for WBCCI, I put an awful lot of effort into writing articles for the Blue Beret, and I, I feel like I'm neglecting the VAC. But maybe I, I would could agree. do something a little quick like that. <laughs> yes, you are. It's time to come back to us. But you yeah, can just a nice little article, if possibly you had any photos of it, because I know you know what I think was Lisa said when you go to the open houses and you see the older trailers and there's seen a lot of those are still in the trailers, but I've spoken with people who say they'd like to convert it. And I like that idea. You went to the 12 volt conversion. Yeah, it, right. it, it was, it was really simple when I found the right socket. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So we, we have an article. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks Lee. Any other questions for Joe? I noticed a box of bandages. Is that a requirement for restoration? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, my trailer is stored quite a distance from home. It's about a 30 minute drive right now. So I've got to be prepared because when you're dealing with aluminum, something's going to happen eventually. Did you, uh, did you redo the bathtub? I, I did pay to have that one refinished. I would have done it myself, but when the when I had the insane thought that I would get this to the 2013 International Rally, um, I knew I didn't have time, and so I paid to have that done. Uh, the, that let's see, the only things I've paid to have done were the cushions were redone, the bathtub was refinished, and the welding on the frame. Pretty much. Oh, and then the rebuilding of the fridge. Oh, I guess I keep it's adding up and rechroming of parts for the stove. You know, I'm going to have the most expensive RV stove when we're done here rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Uh, the correct stove that probably cost them next to nothing because it was so cheap originally. I'm going to have $1,500 or $2,000 into chrome and rebuilt safety valves and stuff. It's going to be the most expensive RV stove you've ever seen. It's not going to look. <laughs> so I have uh, another question on, you mentioned you had it chromed in New Mexico, especially around Albuquerque area. There's nobody because of environmental reasons um, does any chroming anymore. There used to be several shops here. Uh, what, where did you go for that? Because I could use some chroming too on a, on a few parts. Um, there appear to be a lot of chrome shops. I'm in the Detroit metro area. So there's a lot of companies oh, that yeah. still do chroming for automotive stuff. The, the company I chose was not the cheapest. I just, they had a good reputation. So I just decided to pay whatever they told me they wanted uh, because they do, they do Concours quality car restorations. They'll chrome your bumpers and all that kind of stuff. That's I can nice. Get you the contact information if you want, but it's not cheap. Okay. Yeah. When uh, when I was going to have some parts chromed here, they said, "Oh, you have to send them to Mexico," and that's the last place I was going to send my parts, <laughs> thinking I'd never get them back. <laughs> yeah, these these guys are good. Um, they are, you read all the online reviews; they're good. Um, it took a few weeks to get my parts chromed, and and you know, if it's too rusty and too far gone, they won't touch it. But they okay, will, they'll do a nice job. Thank I, you. Have more, I have one more question on your bathtub. How did they, how did they refurbish it? You know, um, at the time he gave me two options. One was to do an epoxy paint, which is what he ended up doing an automotive grade paint that has some flexibility. Or I could have, if I wanted to pay an extra thousand dollars, have them all the way go back and put gel coat on it. And at the time I didn't decide that was a thousand dollars that was going to be well spent. Okay. Okay. Now I wanted to comment on your six months. You're still in the six months. You just didn't know which one it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. um, any more questions? Any more comments? 
Thank you, Joe. All right, we're ready to see a 1965 Safari Shirley Bollinger. Bollinger? Are you ready? Um, Is Shirley on the... Yeah, I thought I saw Shirley earlier. Yeah, her, her muted right now, but she's there. All right, we'll start the video here. Hi, it's Shirley Bollinger, John Lopez. This is our 1965 Safari trailer, and number 3547, we purchased it in 2007 from a relative. And it was an original condition, in really good original condition. Um, we just had it polished last week, so it's now it's all shiny. And we've only done upgrades to the trailer as needed like a new water tank, new pump, new axles, um, batteries, tires, new marmoleum floor, upholstery, just about everything. <laughs> but we've traveled a lot in it. So, I'll take you inside real quick. This is the inside. All original wood cabinets. Like I said, we only did upholstery, curtains, and marmoleum floor. And that that's it. Thanks. Very nice. Uh, Shirley, the marmoleum floor, we're thinking of doing the same. Did you get one long sheet or is it the 12 inch squares that they've come out with? Is Shirley on? Can she hear me? Yeah, I got on my phone. Um, yeah, the marmoleum was one sheet and I had a great floor guy that cut it and installed it. Get back from your phone, you won't get the echo. You're too close. Ticking time. Sounds like a space Martian coming down. I don't know what that was. <laughs> we're on our friends. We're in Ketchum, Idaho. We're on our friends' iPad. Shirley, I have a question, um, which is uh, do you primarily sleep in the front gaucho or do you pull out the side gaucho? We use both. We use both. both, 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 both. <laughs> but we, uh, I, think we'll get back to I think you need to mute the <laughs> iPad. But <laughs> Leave the front one out. <laughs> if you got Shirley, did you get it polished uh, by the fellow in San Diego? Where did you get it polished? No. Uh, <laughs> we <laughs> have <laughs> polished New Magic Mountain. Santa Clarita, California. <laughs> Weird. Anybody here? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, 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 I. <laughs> um, any other? Any other? Any <laughs> With all the the seniors that I see on on, on this uh, <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Already, hey. I'm, I'm okay, muted, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, are we ready to move on? I think she's oh. got an iPad and, a, and her phone in there. They're yeah, I think they're both. things going on. Well, you know, that's something to think, to consider. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to move on to Sandy Lee Pasquale. La, a nine, I think it's a 1962 trade win. No, no. They have a, they have a 65, isn't it? Oh, no, they all, they also have a safari, but I don't think he's he's here with us today. He lives here in Albuquerque. Okay. But go ahead and play the video. We do have a video. Yeah, it's nice. Um, just a warning, this is short, like 20 seconds, so.
I told you it was short. <laughs> Just to clear up the mystery, that's a 64 safari. 64 safari. Okay. Thank you. And Joe, you are so good at picking out those minor details. <laughs> Any questions um, or comments? Well, we live here in Albuquerque and they're good friends of ours and it's a, it's a beautiful trailer. And uh, so he could have shown some of the inside because it's really nice. Mm -hmm. It looks like it is. I'm Googling your original floor plan. See, here's your original floor plan. See, that's a gaucho. I'm sorry, was that a question or is that somebody? Okay, I guess we're ready to see Dave Morrison's um, 1962 Bambi. Dave, you want to say anything before we start? Uh, oh, you can just roll with Damon. Okay. Hi. This I'm is Jane. And I'm Dave, the immediate past president of the Vintage Club. Uh, we're glad to be part of this virtual rally, and uh, we're and gonna... the virtual home um, open house. Open house, and we are currently held up at our weekend cabin in Colebrook, Connecticut, and um, it's a lovely log cabin, but we like the aluminum. So let's show you ours. Okay, here's our little Airstream Park we've got set up here at the cabin. Uh, the rig on the right is Jane's 08 DWR Bambi. Uh, rig on the left is our Pride and Joy 62 Bambi uh, that we picked up a few years back at uh, one of Frank Jensen's uh, birthday bashes for Wally. We uh, pulled into the campground and right in front of the camp office was this rig with a sign on it that said for sale. But all I saw were flashing lights that said, buy me, buy me, buy me. So we did. So we did. Uh, it was pretty much a wreck when we got it. Uh, got it for a very fair price. Um, it had been sitting there for 28 years at this particular campground and they no longer wanted to do storage so the woman was told she had she was told she had to sell it it was time to sell it and we were there i guess the managers told her there was an airstream rally coming in so yep. pretty good audience um you can see that we had replaced a fantastic vent it was one of the first things we did on this rig um the original vent was shot it was gone shattered uh, who knows how many years and uh, the inside was completely water damaged. Uh, you can see the 62 door in the door. This is my van away. We, we <laughs> love this feature. Uh, okay, so we set about replacing the floor. Uh, you can see we put down a marmoleum tile. Uh, we had uh, all the replaced all the cushions and uh, had them uh, reupholstered. Obviously, uh, Jane's handy sewing uh, put together these nice curtains. Uh, we did replace the original fridge. We replaced uh, the countertop. We were able to salvage the original uh, sink. Drop that into the new plywood and stovetop and oh original stovetop as well. Um, I did resurface all of the cabinets. Uh, you can see lower drawers. They were all uh, redone. And we kind of brought this baby back to life. We're really psyched. Um, we do have some future projects planned, like uh, axles. Uh, and uh, I guess that's probably about it 
Um, we love it. Anything you want to say? Bye. Bye. <laughs>
I think they'll get bolted on this one when we get to it. Um, but uh, I don't know. Do you do you recommend welding over bolting? Well, in in sixty two, um, we have a sixty two Bambi as well, and our we just changed the axle and it was welded on. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and it wow. seems like Caldwell one time did a thing that a lot of the sixty twos had were welded on. I don't know if that was something the factory started doing because of the caravans overseas or what, but it's it's a booger to get them off when they're welded. Oh boy. Do you, do you have a California trailer that's welded on or an Ohio? Ohio. Because uh -huh. I've heard of more welded on from California than Ohio. My 62 Safari was what was uh, bolted on. It was not welded. And uh, I've not heard of them going to well i heard the early 61s the first year they put the torsion axles they were often welded but after that they went to more bolt-on yeah I, I don't don't know all the facts yeah my i thought mine might have been on a caravan it had one of those kind of side mount uh spare tires that sit on the corner yeah I've it's seen got that. Big heavy metal plate aluminum plate that's steel pop riveted on and the tire just touches the bumper a little bit to help hold that load off of the body, but it doesn't sit on the bumper. So I just assume that maybe, and it does have a Wally Baum caravan sticker uh, ghost up there. Um, so, and, and by the way, a lot of times when you polish the, the, where the numbers are, they actually come out brighter than they did before you polish. Not that I'm suggesting polishing all those that that beautiful uh, trip that's on the side of your trailer. I want to risk it. That sounds risky. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I agree. I don't think I would. I, I I'd leave it like that as well. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. The next one is Dan and Brenda Engel. And they have a 1966 trade wind. That's me. Hello, I'm Dan Engel. This is a 66 trade wind. We've owned this trailer for about eight years. The exterior is in pretty good shape. We are in the process of installing a new furnace. This is the old one. Um, it was original and it took way too much power to operate about six amps when we're home here we power uh with solar we keep the batteries charged with solar i should say that's our 2000 watt inverter we've got a couple 100 amp lithium batteries behind that and that's our porta potty when we're on the road we've got 400 watts of solar on the tundra the interior is pretty stock. We've put a cork floor in, new soft goods here, LED lights. Uh, we've got three of the original vents, original stove. That's our new furnace, original sink. Uh, fridge is about five years old. We've got a trimetric for keeping track of the power. Um, we took out the air conditioner, it was butt ugly and made a lot of noise. Uh, we install a 5,000 BTU window unit in there when we do need it. Typically we camp in the mountains, so we don't need air conditioning. That's where the air conditioner normally rides. That shows our 2,000 watt inverter. Um, we've got plenty of power always. We can operate the air conditioner for eight hours at a time if we need it. So there you go. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, what size lithium batteries? 
they're two 100 amp, 100 uh, amp hour Battleborn batteries. Those Battleborn are supposed to be really good. Yeah, as, as you probably know, they've got a 10 year warranty. Um, I've had them for about a year. Um, and they, they're nice batteries. It's, it's kind of like you don't have to worry about, all you have to worry about is maybe knocking the dust off of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they just sit back there. Yeah, I, yeah lithium, lithium's the way to go nowadays. I think over the life- Where they're really helpful is when you're operating something like a microwave that takes a lot of power mm -hmm. because the, the voltage doesn't drop down much. And you can run them down to almost flat without ruining them as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I like the cork floor. How does that hold up pretty well? Scuffs and things like that. It's held up uh, remarkably well. It's probably seven years old. Oh, wow. And um, there are places, I, I had a, a leaky, um, fresh water tank and I didn't realize water was getting un under it. And if water gets under the cork floor, um, it causes major problems. But I had, the fortunate thing was I had some left over. So about a two square foot section, I could go in there and replace it. Um, but I really like the cork. I like the, uh, the way it looks with the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, there's a little bit of a contrast um it doesn't seem to show dirt it, you know there don't seem to be any issues with it we like it it's um it's not glued down if i need to uh i mean i could remove the whole floor in about 10 minutes oh wow but if i wanted to because it's just it's just a matter of going around and pulling up the uh the trim over it um, and, and there's about a quarter inch gap all the way around, but once you pull up the trim, then, then you're ready to take the floor out. And, um, sometime if, if we do replace it, you know, we'll probably go back with cork, either that or marmoleum. Haven't decided, but the, the cork's been good. Yeah, it looks sharp. Yeah, yeah it, it has no issues. Mm -hmm. Um, I can talk a little about, bit about the furnace. The furnace was original. Um, and the furnace I bought is probably about half the size. The original furnace was like, I'd say 12 by 12 by 20. This one's like seven by 12 by, uh, by 20. And it fits in, you know, the same location. Uh, it's much quieter and it uses a lot less power. We pretty much exclusively camp without hookups. Um, the original furnace probably drew about six amps. This one draws 1.8 amps. So it's, uh, it's not only very frugal on the uh, electrical consumption, but it's very quiet. Now, it's, it's not as big as the original one. It's this, the output is like 9,000 BTUs, input was 12,000 BTUs. But we tend to camp, you know, it's, it's never that cold. I mean, it might get down to 35 or 40 when we camp. If it's much colder than that, we, we probably will be someplace else. But I'm looking forward to camping with this, you know, with this furnace. So, so it's brand new. It's got obviously spark ignition. Um, unfortunately, the, 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 it's made by Atwood, but I don't think they make this model anymore. It's great for dry camping. And we've been very happy with the, uh, with the inverter. The inverter is quiet. Um, with, with having the inverter, it's a 2000 watt inverter. We can operate anything we want to um, in the trailer. Like for example, if I'm out there working on it, if I need to vacuum something, I can plug in a vacuum. Anything you're running off a normal household uh, receptacle, you, you can operate that in the trailer because it's 1,000 watts. And we don't, 
I don't think we've plugged in to that trailer for for over a year. We just take the take the battle borns and and we uh, use solar to to charge them. Well, what about your uh, inverter or com converter uh, to charge your batteries? Is that a special? That's a good question. Yeah, we when we went with the um, lithium batteries. We bought a uh, progressive dynamics converter. Um, one of the reasons we bought one of those was we had one in before we got the lithium. We had one and it was seven years old and never missed a beat. Um, I'm a member of Air Forums and and they they seem to like uh, Boondocker uh, converters a lot. But they're, uh, they've are they got a little bit better warranty, but they're made in China, and the Progressive Dynamics one are made in, in this country. And I really trust uh, the Progressive Dynamics, and the, and the one that I have, it's specifically for lithium batteries. Um, Thanks. And it'll put out, um, well, my, I've got a generator that I use to charge it if there's no sun. Uh, my generator is only a thousand watts, and it'll it'll, uh, it'll charge through that converter. So that's kind of our backup. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Yamaha or Honda? It's a Honda. It's probably twenty years old. Little thousand watt job. Yeah. Nobody ever gets rid of those little ones. No. Uh. -uh. I mean, I, I don't think there's a hill of beans difference between that one and a new one. Hmm. Uh, something else that, that I've done is I no longer have 30 amp uh, input to the trailer. I changed that to 20 amp because I just didn't need 30 amp uh, since we don't have a, a large air conditioner. Our air conditioner only takes like four or five amps to operate. Um, so we just did, we didn't need 30 amps. Um, and and the, having the electrical system, it's just a whole lot simpler if you're going with 20 amps. And everything, everything in the Airstream is, is uh, once we turn the, convert, the inverter on, everything's powered, all the receptacles are powered. Very nice. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, the next one is Pat and Louise Bruntley. They have a 1961 Bambi. Greetings from Far West Texas. My name is Pat Brantley. My wife is Louise Brantley. We live at Sierra Blanca, Texas, which is 80 miles east of El Paso, right on Interstate 10. We'd like to introduce to you our 1961 Airstream Bambi, built in Jackson Center, Ohio. We purchased Bambi in November 2012 from a lady in South Carolina. She had lost her husband some five years prior. They had owned Bambi since about 1995. As I'm walking to the back of Bambi, I'd like to mention that we have two other vintage trailers. The first one parked right behind Bambi is our 1986 Airstream Excella, 32 foot. We've owned this trailer since 1991. We really don't think of it as a vintage trailer as when we purchased it, it was just almost just like new. Behind the Excella, we have a 1956 8x50 Spartan, which we purchased in 1996 from the son of the original owner. It was in very poor shape, and we spent five years restoring it to its original beauty. Coming back around to the back of Bambi, we might point out that Bambi has a 1961 Texas license plate. I bought this plate off of eBay, had it restored, and it's now recognized by the Texas DMV as the legal plate on Bambi. We'll now walk on back around and go inside of Bambi. Bambi does have the famous door in a door. When we purchased Bambi, she was in good original condition. We did apply a fresh coat of polyurethane varnish to all of the woodwork. 
we had new checkerboard tile installed. The original toilet was not working, so we installed a new ceramic toilet. Also, the water heater was leaking, so we installed a new uh, hot water heater. This towel bar swings back out of the way for access to the bathroom. It did not have an air conditioner, and Louise would have never gone out in it in the summer without an air, so we did install a new air conditioner. Obviously, the refrigerator is original. It did not work. We removed it, had it rebuilt at ex great expense, and it still doesn't work very well, so we travel with a Dometic cooler. My most recent upgrade or change is to remove the original furnace. I was told it did work, although I would have never been very comfortable using a furnace that old due to fear of carbon monoxide poisoning. We have been out in Bambi in 30 degree weather and a small electric heater kept us toasty warm. So we removed the furnace, made a nice little storage area out of it, used the grill from the furnace as the door to the storage area to keep the original look and also the vents on the outside of the trailer are still in place for the original look. We have entered Bambi in two antique car shows at our county fair and have won trophies both times. Since we've owned Bambi, we have spent about 195 nights in her. We've taken somewhere around 34 separate trips and have towed her about 16,000 miles and we certainly look forward to taking many many more trips in Bambi down through the years. We've enjoyed showing Bambi to you and hope someday to see you down the road. Really nice. I like the uh, I like the license plate touch. I hadn't thought of that. That's, that's another something else we learned today. At least I don't know. Does anybody else have a vintage license plate? I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, I, I took a note about that. I said 1906 plate. That's a state by state thing. Some states now have historic plate programs, some don't. Cute. Any, any questions? Does anyone know do these 60 Bambies, did they have a dinette that popped up out of that front yeah, bench? You should, you should. Uh, my 19 Bambi has a, a table. You, you can you can take a table out of the closet and you can set it up between both the couches and it's a, it's somewhat of a dinette. Um, and that's what we do with ours. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so we're ready to uh, see Rachel Payne's 1962 trade win. And she's not on the call, but um, she did submit a video. All right, here we go. Rachel's video. Hi, I'm Rachel Payne. I'm the president of the VAC, which is the Vintage Airstream Club, and this is my Airstream. This is a 1962 trade wind, 24 foot. And I'm in the process of redoing it not restoring but redoing it and so it is in a remodel mode but I can still use it uh, my theme is chickens and as you can see I have my little buddies here with me a little chicken theme here my girls are over here I have rescued chickens but I also uh, named my Airstream Agnes after my grandmother my grandmother and grandpa Payne loved going RV and uh, I thought the best way to honor my grandmother and my grandfather should take my Airstream with me and name it after them and go to those places they went. This is uh, it's in the stages so I've got some duct tape and all uh, you got to do some rednecking right? and uh, it's not bad, too bad to shape. I do want to say that uh, Dennis, Beth and David McCall uh, helped me with most of the restoration so far. So my back end of it. Here. Have the awning. I have a new axle, new floors. Uh, we had to do a shallow restoration. We'll go inside.
you can see I have the the two part screen door everybody loves that nice thing is is I can attach it here as I go in <clears throat> now I also have no floor uh, I have all new floor, but I don't have a gato couch yet. I took all that out and had to in order to redo. Um, so I have a lot of extra space on this side. The kitchen is actually in my garage. I plan on uh, redoing that and all. Oh, it's a little foggy there. <clears throat> I also in charge of the merchandise, so. Uh, that's all the uh, back swag, all your needs if you need that. Here's my air mattress. Yes, it's still aired up. I got some good sealant going on. If you noticed, my lovely, <laughs> lovely curtains there, they are uh, chicken. Okay, uh, my porta potty that I do use now. But I have a beautiful, lovely bathroom here that is still in progress. Cannot use it, but I wanted to show y'all this all together. It's beautiful. David McCall did a wonderful job back here. I also have, oh, here's my fishing poles. I was wondering where they were. Okay, one closet here. Okay, and if you noticed, that piece there is the original diagram of my trailer. I have a vanity here um, and everything, uh, upper cabinet here, and then I also have another closet here. You cannot go wrong without having a flamingo, and uh, my fishing hat there, and some that way, and my pantry. Oh, yes, you can't go wrong. That is the original uh, lifetime warranty of uh, for my Airstream. And I have a pantry here. Do you see the pantry? So it's still a work in progress. It's a silver tint and doesn't have air conditioning. No electricity, but uh, better than what I had. Thank you. Nothing wrong with the silver tint. Yep. Any questions for Rachel? I can take, I can jot down, and, or we can jot down and get back to her. Rachel was a real trooper last year in Doswell. We had this heat wave. It was 100 degrees a couple of those yeah. days, and she had no air conditioning, and she slept in that thing. I don't know how she did it, but that was, uh, she was quite dedicated. <laughs> and, her, and her chickens made it through as well. <laughs> That's right. She brought some chickens with her too. They were the most popular thing there, I think. And they laid eggs. We had fresh eggs. It was. It was. Uh, it's always entertaining with Rachel next door. <laughs> well, you know, she, she she swapped with me. She wanted me to park uh, a couple of trailers away because of my dog and the chickens. Oh. Oh, the dog, right. The dog will look at the chickens and say, well, they're interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't, you were not the only one with the dog, so uh, everybody has a dog. Yeah, but those chickens were really, really nice. They were a lot of fun. And they, yeah. they were also hot. She had, she had the steam coming on. <laughs> they were pampered more than anybody. It was pretty fun. They were cool. They were definitely cool, that one. <laughs> they were cool. Well, any questions or any um, comments? Well, I'm okay. Just, I'm just surprised that a year later we're now hearing the chickens at the rally story. So <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that they were chickens are well. welcome, <laughs> especially if you're going to share the eggs. <laughs> well, you know, my, my my wife and I we drove into the rendezvous and we saw the chickens and we said, "Who has chickens?" I mean, they were out you know, roaming, and I'm a vegetarian, so for me it was like, "Yeah, all right, the chickens," um, but my wife isn't. <laughs> and I said, "No, we're not having chickens." So uh, <laughs> it was. It was interesting. I thought she brought them to eat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and she actually rescues chickens, for those people that may not know. She actually yeah. rescues them. She had a 20 or 30 of them recently at home. Yes, a huge amount. Yeah. yeah, it's really something. Um, maybe we'll see some chickens next year in Tennessee. I hope so. <laughs> All right, the next one is Kevin and Melissa Katz, and they have a 1965 Caravel? Caravel, yeah. I see that they're here. Anything you want to say before we show the video? 
Oops. We can't right. hear you, Kevin. Kevin, we can't hear you. Got to hit the, you, gotta hit the mute button. <laughs> Kevin, we can't hear you. Um, All right, we'll play the video and let him. Let him find right, okay. It. Oh, he did it. Oh, He's out. He is. I'm muted. Oh, gotcha. Um, Kevin, we okay. can hear you. Um, All right, you can watch it and then questions. You want uh, us to watch it first? Okay. Yeah, watch it first. All right. Hello from Kevin and Melissa Katz in San Marcos, Texas. We were looking forward to coming to Loveland, and unfortunately, we all know that went down the tubes. But here we are, we, we've got a 1965 Caravelle, and uh, it's what we've been traveling in for the last about 10 years. We uh, first used it as a bedroom, and so, it's minimalistic. We took out the kitchen. We have a refrigerator in it, a little refrigerator, 12 volt. We've got a fully functional bathroom with a shower and toilet and all that we use all the time. Uh, we use the gaucho and this is what we have in the end, period piece chairs. Um, put in all the um, ocean air blinds, but what I really want to show you is the project I've been working on since COVID gave me something to do. And there it is, my 1949 Curtis Wright. Uh, got an absolute wreck and have uh, built a new chassis, used Kusa board, added windows that there was only one window there. Yeah, uh, this week I finished doing the door, which was a nightmare, as we all know. Added this window here and started polishing it just to to make us all feel better. Um, but it's really it's really doing pretty good. You're going to have to deal with the front windows um, down the side here. You can see put in. Uh, some plugs there, hot water heaters going in there, or some of that's all new aluminum. Added a window on this side too, to get a little bit more uh, light. It had a terrible uh, jinky window in the side here, and we fixed that. It's the back of it. It's got some patina, and I'm going to leave that. Those. I'm going to leave the patina in it. Um, I don't mind a, a little bit of. Um, Patina. So the whole lower skin inside has been replaced, and um, that's the Kusa board floor. Um, and uh, there's hot water heater going in, toilet's going to be there. And uh, I'll show you. Um, have had a, a great shower built, and this is. This is stainless steel shower and um, with a toilet. So anyway, I've used up my time. There we go. Bye. <laughs> wow. That is wow. quite the shower. Yeah. Quite a project. The workshop. You have a nice big garage. I like that shop. Yeah, I've got a big barn and I can keep it in there and I can work on it and have both trailers in there. So where did you pick that one up from? Ah, yeah, a ridiculous story. So I've been looking for a Curtis Wright for a long time because I wanted an old trailer that I could bring to rallies. And you know, Curtis Wright, as Bill Fisher will tell you, you can put in WBCCI. So because of the history of Wally Byam and Curtis Wright. So I was looking for one and I was looking on, on Craigslist all over. And uh, I'd keep looking for one and one would come up and then it would say listed four years ago. And I wanted one that I could totally redo myself because um, I tend to uh, not be a big fan of, uh, of, of the historical nature, the historical redos. 
So uh, I found one and it said listed four hours ago and I was so excited and I jumped right on it and, and um, called the guy and he said, it was, it was about nine o'clock at night and he said, I'm at my kid's soccer game, I'll call you back. He called me back at about 11 o'clock at night and we chatted for a while and, uh, and it had been a donut shop. It had a huge um, a, a, um, thing in the side of it to, to, to a big hole to take the, the, the vent out of it. And, and I agreed on the price and everything, which was overpriced, but I wanted it. And uh, <laughs> he, said, well, you, he said, you do know where I am, don't you? Because you got it on Craigslist. I said, no, I've got no idea. He says, I'm half an hour north of Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> I'm in Texas, right? <laughs> oh, oh. So, then I had to get it back here, and that's the story. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Well, it's going to be a beauty when it's finished. It's a beauty right now. Yeah, well, today I finished pri uh, finished doing the primering on it, and so we uh, finished spraying it this morning. I'm going to shoot Zolotone on uh, Monday. And, oh, nice. then, uh, and then I've already got the sheet marmolium. We'll probably put the marmolium in towards the end of next week. So, uh, But then we're going to get on the road and go up to get out of the heat of Texas. So I'll probably get stalled a little bit. And I want to get it done. Which is a good thing since I haven't seen my husband in months. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be a good thing. That could be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, are we going to see it? A lot of time in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to see it in Tennessee next year? You know, I don't know. It's po it's quite possible. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I hope to have done by the end of the year. I mean, I'm going to start the cabinetry straight after that, and I, you know, it's fully wired and everything. The plumbing should be very easy. It's just great. It's just going to have. I'm just going to have one sink, one big sink, right next to that, uh, that um, right next to that uh, shower. So it should go pretty. You know, everything tight. You know, I, I've built hot rods before, and and I did did that other the Caravel when we bought the Caravel, a tree had fallen on it, broken the door and and everything. So and I put a new axle on that. So uh, for you, for the guys who do their own work, you know, you do everything three times. You know, the first time you do it, you screw it up. The second time, you nearly get it right, and the third time, you get it the way you want. True. So true. Wow. It's called a learning curve. <laughs> yeah, but I wish I would learn from one project to the next. That I see look. Uh, any other questions? Well, I thought it was, uh, the, I've never heard, well, the minimalist thing back on your on the Caravel, you took out the kitchen. So uh, how do you cook? What what do you use for your so, cooking? So we, we travel a lot. I mean, we've done tens of thousands of miles in that trailer. Basically, inside we have a, um, we have a, a toaster and we have a, a, car, a, 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 hot, a hot water heater. A, kettle and so we can make coffee and toast and stuff like that and then i use the uh, we have a little camping stove that we hook up to the gas tank in the front and we cook outside and i mean i don't want to cook inside a 17 foot trailer anyway so it works out just fine for us and we've got a little barbecue we take with us too so we we have not missed not having a kitchen inside the trailer not for a second well, gives you more storage for other things, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. In fact, we just put the fridge in, and, and the fridge is just a little uh, a little uh, dorm-type fridge from me trailer and, and I'm running it off an inverter. I've got a, I've got a uh, removable solar panel that I just set out there. And, and I've also just done something quite interesting that I'm about to do there. I bought it. I don't know if people know about this, but I bought a Renogy DC to DC converter. So, um, rather a charger, so that my car will actually charge my battery in my trailer when I'm traveling. Because I very quickly realized that we were modern 
modern alternators do not charge your battery in your train. So, um, and then the only question I have for everybody, if you can help me with this, I want to put a 30 gallon tank on the front of that pipe frame that I've built for the Curtis Wright. And if anybody knows of a good way to mount that 30 gallon uh, tank, I appreciate that information. Yeah, whoever has maybe a, a like a 65 Caravel, we had one for a while and the 30 gallon tank was forward against the forward wall. And I think it was, if I can recall right, that there was a, you know, it had a frame on the bottom and it, I guess it just strapped on to the upper upper end, but someone's got a caravel, they ought to, they, they might have that information. No, no, not for the caravel, for the Curtis Wright. The caravel would be easy because it's got a, you know, it's got that uh, triangular chassis, but the, on the Curtis Wright, I've, I've got a pipe, pipe uh, simulated type pipe frames, I'm trying to put the 30 gallon tank on the center of a four inch pipe. Front of the truck. <laughs> Kevin, this is Bill Fisher. Yeah. I have the 47 Curtis Wright, friends with Pat. See, Pat hey, McDowell. Bill, Bill, I've met you, I've seen your trailer at uh, Pat McDowell's place. Yeah, when uh, we were still working on it. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, I have a 30 gallon water tank uh, in the. Uh, are you, are you talking propane tank, water tank? Propane tank. Oh, propane tank. I'll send you a picture. Okay, cool. Great. I'll send it back and send it to you. Okay. You know the little triangle on the front of the Curtis right down at the pipe? I'm not. The piece of metal. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I... I've kind of reproduced that in steel and welded it to the pipe. Okay. Get it down and it's a, it's a mirror image of that. And then I made a platform there. That's a wilting and, pipe. Here. And then I, I, we, we bent a piece of steel the size of the tank. I pinned the tank with little hitch pins and use my wife's Wilton cake pan to decorate it. <laughs> okay, I'd love to see pictures of that. Did, yeah, you, put, did you put a strap around the, the tank? No, no. You just pinned it from the bottom? I pinned it three places on the bottom, okay. and I figured if I had a wreck that was hard enough to break that loose that I had bigger problems in that tank. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I have a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, when you said you were going to shoot your Zolotone, was that painting your Zolotone? And I was just wondering, are you going to paint it white? What's the best way to do that? Okay, so Zolotone, so Zolotone requires a white primer. So the primer that I just put on is a special Kills called Kills Adhesion that's uh, their most expensive primer <laughs> and it's supposed to stick to anything and it seems to do a good job. So it's white. So that is what I sprayed on. The, zo the, Zola, tone that I, the Zola tone I'm using is Polymix and it's, uh, you spray it and it's got very specific instructions, but basically you spray the first coat with a higher pressure, and lower volume and to get a bit of a smoother undercoat and then you come back once that's dried a little bit they say half an hour to an hour later and you spray the second coat uh, using higher volume and lower pressure and your gun a little bit further away from the surface okay so then can you get a true white? You're not trying to get white. I'm trying to get Zolotone. You know, Zolo, you can get a white Zolotone, but Zolotone is usually multiple colors. Okay. So they, if you, if you, they, the company will send you lots and lots of samples. It's not a problem. 
and they do have some that are like white on white. So you're getting, you know, you're getting texture. But most Zolotone, most people who shoot Zolotone do it to have a, a multiple color texture. So we're doing one that's kind of a grayish putty color, but okay. it's, it's almost like a white background with that mottled kind of color on it. But it was polymix? It's polymix. Okay, thank you. Now, there's, on Zolotone, there's one other interesting thing that I found out. Uh, there's Zolotone Residential, which is if you go and look for Zolotone. But if you look, for, if you look at something else, it's called Zolotone 20. And it's a different company totally now. And they use that on like truck beds and things like that. And it is an oil-based Zolotone as opposed to all the other Zolotones are water-based. Mm -hmm. And But it's only got about eight colors. If you like those colors, I think it's cheaper and I think it's more durable. But you, but you don't have the literally 40 or 50 or 60 colors that you can choose from in the other Zolotones. Yeah. Well, this is Rodney. Um, and when we re redid our 56, um, in lieu of taking out everything, we took out all the upper cabinets, but Lisa did it with a roll-on Zolotone, and it looks looks really good after you still did the primer and everything, and it's a roll-on Zolotone, and you can only get a handful of different colors that way, too. But it works was well if from, you don't want to gut your trailer. Yeah. Who Was that from Zolotone 20? No, that's from Zolotone. Yeah. Okay. So Zolotone has about, I think, six different types of Zolotone. And if you go on their site, it's very clear as to, or maybe there's five, it's very clear as to what each one does. And as Ronnie said, that there is one that's a, 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 um, a roll on. And you, I don't know if you've seen on the forums, there's a guy by the name of Baba, who's in Fredericksburg, Texas. He did a 50s trailer, did an absolute beautiful job. And they, he did the roll on and he did the spray, and he actually likes the roll-on. But um, I'm going to do the spray. Right. And you could call Zolotone. They have great reps. The reps travel all over, and they'll get back to you. They can even come and visit you and look at your project, and they're very accommodating. It's a good company. Thanks. OK. Any other questions? All right, we're ready to see the next one. It's uh, Buzz and Lynn Blackie. Blinky. Blink. Uh, Blink. Uh, B L I C K. Blink. Yeah, Blink. Yeah, I just, I'm sorry, my glasses are. Uh, it's a 1966 Globetrotter. Globetrotter. Cold, cold I finally got my mic to work at least, but you, my camera still is on the blink. Okay. All right, we're ready to show your um, video. All right. Okay, here's a quick tour of our 1966 Globetrotter Airstream 20-foot trailer. That's a little plaque that I put out on where it shows, and people are going to come in and take a look at the thing so they know whose it is. Um, quick tour of the outside, um, shined up by um, Hollywood Vintage Trailers. Mechanically, almost everything was either re was repaired, replaced, or updated. One of the features that they did was a new axle and hydraulic disc brakes, actually electric over hydraulic, which is probably overkill, but boy, do they stop. One of the features of the 66 through 68 was corning curved glass windows, which replaced the, the veined jealousy windows from earlier years. Uh, they're very, very durable, and unless you hit them from the side. So in 69, they put a metal rim around them. So that's about, those are the big features here. Interior, they painted all of the original wood surfaces and replaced it with sort of a bamboo modern look. And all of the flat surfaces are bamboo, coated with six coats of varathane since bamboo does tend to absorb water. All LED lighting, all new appliances. Trying to do this quickly. TV, of course, indispensable for us on camping trips. 
um, our gray water tank uh, rides there when we're on the road in the um, shower area it fits very nicely they didn't have a gray water tank just a black water tank in that era um, one of the features I want to point out is a Propex furnace from Britain um, great advantage is it vents through the bottom instead of the side so that the um, <clears throat> The old vent that they had covered over with a new sheet of aluminum on the outside, I didn't have to punch a hole in it. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Bye. Nice touches with the bamboo. Very pretty. Oh, thank you. It, um, I don't know. I don't know that I would do it again. It's especially the table is heavy. And uh, so we've just gotten used to uh, my wife sleeps uh, on one side of the table area and we just move the table over a little bit instead of lifting it up. The damn thing weighs, I have no idea how much. Uh, but in any case, it's, uh, yeah, it looks nice. It's, and it's reasonably durable. You just don't want to leave water on it too long. Oh, okay. So she sleeps on one side and you sleep on the floor, right? <laughs> I sleep on the gaucho. I bring okay. the gaucho out and sleep there. And, uh, and depending on how we're feeling about each other, I don't sleep on the floor, no. <laughs> That's a beautiful trailer. That's really gorgeous. Yes. What's that? Which is? That trailer. I think your trailer is fabulous. It's really great. Oh, thank you. Some people, you know, people who really like, we've had, uh, we had a, a 70s era safari before with the original wood and everything. And I don't know, I like that, but um, somehow I like this. I like the nice clean look they made for it. And she made the, uh, the new cushions, uh, new padding and everything, and then covered them with a real high quality, <laughs> we call it pleather, uh, plastic leather. But it feels really good and it's thick. Uh, it's, it's very, very well done. Um, the previous owners did a great job. They actually lived in it for while a house was being constructed. And so they lived in it for a while. So it was just set up for 110. So I put in a couple of, of uh, AGM batteries, um, updated the electrical somewhat, uh, did a number of, of small things, but they did all the heavy lifting with the new appliances and everything. Very elegant. The Propex furnace, by the way, is um, originally was designed for a small pleasure craft. And mm -hmm. we had a, a 30 foot, I don't know if any of you know boats very much, but it was a, a Willard pleasure trawler. And uh, I was going to install the Propex furnace there. Uh, very low amp draw, very low, uh, very high efficiency propane. And like I said, it vents through the through the floor uh, for all of the combustible material, and um, it just it works really well. It's about a third of the size of a normal um, furnace, so it fits in the base of that cabinet. And I just put a false bottom on top of that, and we store all of our bedding on top of that. And uh, it's nice and quiet, very efficient. Um, if you're, I don't know, if you're considering a new furnace, at least it's something to look at if you want something small, efficient, compact. Um, it's a good, it seems like a good bit. Are they a forced air furnaces or like a wall furnace? Uh, well, it's forced air. The two vents uh, down below, one's an intake, of course, and then the other one, you know, fresh, fresh air intake, and then the other one, spouts it out you can get uh you can get it so that it's uh vents to various locations but in that size trailer we didn't need it it's ten thousand either ten or twelve thousand btus um so it's you know it certainly heats it up and then it has a fan setting too so you can just run the fan if you want and uh use that to circulate in hot weather thank you sure 
Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Uh, the Welcome. next one is the next one is um, my Bambi, <laughs> uh, 1961 Bambi. I just want to do a little, little uh, housekeeping here. Uh, Okay, well, I don't know if anybody realizes how long we've been doing this. I'm glad everybody's still sticking around. We have four, <laughs> trailers, we have four trailers left. We have um, four trailers so and it's, I've learned a lot. I have three pages of notes already. Yeah, and please, when the last one's shown, don't hang up because we would like to talk to the members and get some feedback, ask some questions, and, um, you know, what, what do you want to see the VAC do in the future, you know, um, suggestions for events, and... Um, stuff for the upcoming year. So after the open house, if you can stick around and want to chat some more about back stuff, please do. All right, we'll start Ed's video. Welcome to Ithaca, New York. This is a 1961 Airstream Bambi. It was the first year that Airstream manufactured it. Uh, we purchased it back in 2011 in Dollarton, South Carolina. It was out in the field for 20 years. Once it, we received it here in New York, um, we had to change the skin on one side because it, there was a tear. I worked very closely with an aircraft company and we were able to match it as close as possible. We also had to replace the hot water heater. Uh, it had an electric hot water heater. So we went back to propane. We replaced the axle, it needed a new axle. We are in the process of polishing it, but we're polishing it to a satin polish, not a nickel polish. So that's a little bit of a different process. We have made several trips to the west with it. Um, it travels, it, it tows very well. It weighs 1,500 pounds. It has only two tanks. It has a black water tank and a fresh water tank. It does not have a gray water tank. But we have boondocked with it several times and we didn't have a problem. We had a blue boy, so that, that worked out well. Uh, on the inside, we kept it as close as possible to original. We did put a new floor, it's a bamboo floor. It has five drawers on the bottom where we put our travel items. Um, the, uh, the fixtures are original. We did not change any of the fixtures. We cleaned them up and just put them back in. It could sleep three individuals. We've had up to six people in the camper itself. It is self-contained. It has its own kitchen. We have a toaster oven. We do not have a microwave. It has a, a refrigerator and it has a stove. It has a full bath, what we call today a wet bath, but it's very convenient. It has a shower as well. It has a pantry and it has a closet. We have entered it in competition. It has won three awards. And this is the Michigan model. That year, Airstream manufactured two Bambis. One was the Michigan model and one was the California model. The only difference is that the California model has the bathroom on the right-hand side. The Michigan model has it on the left-hand side. We are not using it often. We haven't used it probably for a couple of years now because we do have a big dog now and we travel in our 1985 Airstream because it's larger and it's just more convenient for us. Thank you. Nice. Thanks. That was my that was my almost divorce um, airstream. When I brought it home, my wife was going to leave me. <laughs> it was it was in pretty bad shape when we got it here, and um, I was committed to make it to bring it back to life. So we worked on it for for a long time. Did a good job. Yeah. Thanks. Still working on. But um, we'll get it there. We were we we went to Mexico this year, but we took the eighty five airstream. We thought about taking the Bambi, but it was going to be a long trip for for three of us with the dog, and we decided to take the eighty five. Uh, hey. But the, you know, it it was a uh, we lost. We had a nineteen seventy two land yacht and where we live, we had a flood, a major flood, and we lost the land yacht. And um, I was determined to get another vintage, and I found this one in South Carolina. And, oh, 
The rest hey. is history. Hey, Ed. Yeah. Yes. What, what you do is you bring it home for Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> that we brought our home. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I think you guys, been, you guys may have noticed it's yellow inside, and I didn't do any of that. She picked out the color. She picked out the color for the upholstery. I, I said we figured we'd do this as a project, and, and we sort of got the marriage to work again. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Well, but, um, well, I'm surprised how many Bambies are being showed in this group. Yeah. yeah they're, they're all great. And they all have the same story as you find these poor things lost in some field that hasn't been touched in 25, 30 years, and you have to power wash them just to see what's underneath them. It's amazing. It's just, everybody seems to have the same kind of background with these. <laughs> Ours was a quarter of a mile from the house. I've been driving by it for over 20 years and never did see it. <laughs> so we got bear streams. Um. Well, you know, I, I towed this one from South Carolina and um, we hooked it up and the lights were working. Some of the lights were working, some were not. And I would be driving it, towing it up. Some lights were on, some were not at times. And I was just praying that, God, let me make it to New York with this. <laughs> and it, 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 um, so I, if it, it could make a trip like that and the condition it was in, it, I, I trust it. I trust it quite a bit. Well, well it looks good, Ed. Thank yeah. you. Um, oh, I, I yeah, had I'm one. This Rachel uh, again back. I'm sorry. I said this is Rachel again. I'm back. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, uh, Welcome, Rachel. Three breaks right now on my limo trip, so I'm in the okay. party bus still. But hey, was there another? Ed, was there how, 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 do you, how do you get a satin finish on, rather um, than mirrored finish? Well, I was um talking to a few people in tin can. I belong to a tin can tourists. And they were telling me just polish it by hand. I'm actually polishing it by hand. I'm not using any buffers or anything on it. And get it to the point, uh, we had to replace the skin on the side. Get it to the point where it gets as close as possible to that and they call it a satin versus a nickel. Um, so I, um, I did get a price um, to get it polished in Ohio and I was almost getting divorced already. So if I would have told her the price about that, I would have been divorced. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Ed, I have a question. When you so you polish it yourself by hand, did you use the Nuvite polishing system or what system did you use? No, I actually am um, using Mother's Friend and um and a truck polish. Uh, the things that they use on the trucks for their um the chrome um toolboxes. So just that. Mother's friend? Mother's friend, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's called cool, Mother's Friend. <laughs> Comes in a jar. And I needed a, I needed a friend at that time. So, it worked out. <laughs> so did you just put it on with hands and a rig, yeah. or did you use a machine? No, I didn't use a machine. All the clothes my wife threw out the window. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> and we had rags and towels, and I, I just use rags and towels, and I go over it. And as we all know, when they get black, I throw them out, and I use another one to finish it up. Okay. So it's you don't have to go to the gym, your your arm workout. Yeah, it's all. You got, must have massive muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'm getting old, so it's, it's, it's not as the way it used to be, but I've been doing it for the past seven, eight years. <laughs> your mother's friend. <laughs> I'm sorry? What was the question I didn't hear? It's a slow process, then. It is a slow process. Very I'm just slow. saying it was, it's a slow. And the older you get, the slower it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Okay, we're ready for Lynn Tasmal, 1964 Overlander. Welcome to the North Georgia Mountains. Here's a tour of our 1964 Airstream Overlander International model. She's 26 feet long, weighs 4,400 pounds, loaded with gear, not including liquids, which we don't tow with. Spare tire cover, shiny tanks, 
This is a door within a door model. The door's currently open. It's the original screen artwork. Full awning package all the way around. In we go. Catalytic heater. And this is the original living room, original clock and light fixtures, folding table, stove and oven work perfectly. I can always find my fire extinguisher, y'all. Fridge runs on propane and electric. Wardrobe converted to a pantry here. So we have plenty of storage for dishes and food. Twin beds. Room dividers were replaced. The vinyl was cracked. So all the original hardware was used to remake these room dividers out of Sunbrella. And the uh, original factory bathroom. We have a new China toilet here under this cute little lid. And then here's our bath. Shower works great. There's the shower curtain, which we keep closed. We don't want to entrain water into that. It's kind of got cardboard guts. Uh, twin beds, padded ceiling as it's an international model. It's a delight to, to tow. We can't wait to see you on the road. Happy camping. Thank you, Lynn. Back in Virginia, that's I wanted to see your trailer, but we got so caught up at open house, I didn't get to see it, so thanks. You're welcome. It's a fun little trailer. See, it might I like be it. our last trailer, because I love it so much. It just <laughs> does everything we need. Yeah, it's really pretty. Really, really nice. Well, thanks. We, uh, we travel a lot in it. We've got two trips coming up with our local unit uh, very soon, and we just we love it. It also functions as an extra room when there's too many people at the house. Yeah, they're handy for that. <laughs> Lynn, where did you purchase it? Where did you get your tire cover? Where did you get the cover for your tire? Your spare That's tire? The original did cover. Come with the three up holsters. Is it? It's original. We I we purchased it from a man in Virginia who did the restoration himself. It was his first restoration that he did in front of him. And then we bought it. It's Your beautiful. spare tire, the aluminum spare tire, did that cover, did that come with it? Yes, that's the original spare tire. There were two owners prior to the restorer. So we have a lot of their original, like the first, campground it ever went to which was up in Maine we have a little flyer from that well it's a beautiful trailer if uh, anyone by chance has a spare aluminum tire cover um, <laughs> if you could private message me that'd be great because that's one of the things that's missing off the 63 because it originally or uh, 63 safari it originally had one but it's uh, it was missing in action when we pulled the trailer out of the woods yeah they're, mm. they're a hard thing to find I'm yeah. We'd like to find one of those too. <laughs> yeah, I've got one that I'm restoring too. I'm not giving mine away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you show the trailer about, about money talk. Up with one. Lynn, you money keep, talk. Lynn, you better keep an eye on it when we go to international next year. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Midnight That's what I'm going to put on there, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lynn, I have a question. Yes. Was the full awning package on it when you bought it? I mean, do you know where they bought it from? The, um, so there was a Dometic, actually it's called an A&E awning that we think may have been original to the trailer. The fabric had looked like it had been replaced in the 80s. We kept that original framing. We uh, converted it to some new fabric about two years ago. And at that time, had the street side and the rear awnings put on. Those are zip D's. And we go to a guy up in Michigan named Chuck's KO, who works very closely with zip D. And I can get you his information if okay. you're up that way, because he just does a great job. I'm actually in Washington State. So if anyone oh, knows someone. 
<laughs> in Washington, I'd love to get connected. Okay. But thank you. It's very nice. Sure. And Any Lynn other questions? Lynn is the only one virtually in her trailer right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she was smart enough to take a picture inside. Can I do? Okay, any other questions? Okay, uh, next one is Lee and Joyce Contrelli. Con Con it's a 1976 Arg Argosy. Yeah, we've got the, the Argosy we bought it definitely was a basket case. It was basically completely gutted. The person who owned it was using the shower for a cat litter box. And most of the bulkheads were gone. So we worked up a really good deal. And overall, it was fun. Joyce and I sat in the front of it for many hours in our lawn chairs <laughs> looking at what we could do to it. We started with a 68, 24 foot Airstream. So we'd worked through it. And then we bought this 84, 31 footer. And so then plus going to the open houses and seeing what other people have done, it helped us decide on how we wanted to build the interior. So we don't have a cabin up north. So this is our northern cabin on wheels. And you'll see what we're, I'm saying once you, we, you look at the videos of it. And so it was fun. One of the interesting things about for me to build, I mean, there's many of them, the bulkheads are actually made of underlayment on flooring. We went to Home Depot and I was going to be looking for maybe like a oak veneered. And so the person there asked me what I was looking for. And he said, well, we just got this really nice looking underlayment. And so we, Luckily, it didn't have those knots in. If you see plywood and stuff, they'll have knots with patches in. And these were really very nice. The grain of it looked very similar to some of the original panels in Airstreams. But it was much cheaper than the other veneer. So we had fun designing it and so forth. So. We're in the process of changing the axles on it. I hope to be able to get it painted this summer in the process of sanding it, et cetera. So I'll let you look at the video and if you have questions, we'll answer them. Thank you. All right, we'll get it. here we go. Welcome to our 1976 24 foot Argosy. We did a total frame up renovation to the trailer. The entire inside was gutted. Lee has done all the work himself with just a little bit of assistance from me. Um, the couch was given to us by some friends who took it out of their Argosy. So the fabric is original to Argosy's of that period. The cabinets in the entire trailer were made by Lee from wood he had collected over the years. These cabinets in the kitchen are Hackberry and the cut work is by Cordill Custom Designs. I made all the curtains and drapes in the trailer. The, the limb, two limbs, well, there's one log actually we found at a campground and it's white birch. So Lee cut the log in half to make the trim work separating the, the uh, bedroom, the doorway separating the bedroom from the kitchen area. The kitchen, or excuse me, the bedroom cabinets under the bed and the frames of the bed are made of walnut. That's local walnut from our area. The comfort station, also known as the bathroom, is separated by a sliding window door. The bathroom cabinets are made of cedar. And the finishes in the bathroom, Lee restored and refinished and painted them with white epoxy paint. And they seem to be holding up well. The bathroom is in the original configuration.
we took time as we were planning uh, how we wanted to put the air, uh, excuse me, Argosy back together by sitting in here with lawn chairs and sketching and drawing different plans for thinking of what we wanted to store and where we wanted to store it. So it took some thinking, it took some planning, but we're really happy with how it turned out. And all in all, there's not much we would even change about the trailer if we were to redo it. So we hope you have enjoyed taking a peek at our Argosy and we hope to see you down the road. Can't hear you, Ed. Yep, Ed's muted. Sorry. Um, a lot of work, Lee. A lot of work, no doubt about it. Yeah. It looks nice. familiar. I think we've seen it. Have you been to vintage uh, uh, outings and where there's open houses? It looks familiar to me. No, we just finished up. We finished up basically last fall. We went to a vintage rally up in Nebraska. And so it hasn't been too many places. We did take it last year and what we did was called a rolling rally into Minnesota up to Duluth area, the North Shore. And so that was really the biggest time out with it. So we were hoping to have it Colorado this year. So we would have had the axles on earlier it would have been painted earlier, but this whole process, as we've all gone through, was slowed down. That's okay. So it's it will be ready again by next summer. Well, the woodwork beautiful. That has that cabin cabin appeal to it. I mean, it's beautiful. No, Great thank job. You. Yeah, it's just all local woods, and the living area is a hackberry, and I've never used it before, and there's a local lumber yard that the owner was a good woodworker and knew the different woods. So I took the big planks over to him because he had a big planer, not knowing what the wood was. And he looked at it and he goes, well, that's Hackberry. So it's a beautiful kind of a, a I'd call it a coffee, has coffee look to it. So yeah. it was fun working with it. And what I did with the kitchen cabinets you could, the front of the cabinet where the sink is basically comes apart. It's the whole cabinet will come apart because that's front areas where the furnace is, the water heater. And so if you've got the air streams, you know what it's like to try to work on some things if it's original cabinets. So I just take a few screws out of that fascia and that whole front will come off and then the area where the refrigerator is, there's a kingpin set up on it, up at the upper corner, that there is a little bear sitting on the kingpin. You take the bear off, you pull that pin, and that whole unit comes apart also wow. to get at things easily. So, like I said, we sat many hours trying to figure what to do and having owned, like I say, the 68 and even the 84, that's hard, difficult to get the place to work. So at this point, the trailer at least is staying together rolling down the road. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, I love the uh, the cabin look too. I second that too, that's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, it's very nice. No, Any other clock? <laughs> Any other questions or any other comments? All right, Damon, it's time to see yours. Hey, last one, mine. <laughs> uh, my only comment is gonna be is, Ed, I have the opposite problem with my wife. Every time she sees an Airstream, she wants to buy it. And I have to tell her no, because I know how much work there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Just, uh, is any, anybody familiar with coparts.com? They sell wrecked and insurance vehicles. Uh, is that the one in Missouri? They're all over. They, they have places all over. Oh, real, real quick. So they had a newer 
2007 with a slide here in Indiana uh, that was up for auction. And she was just bound to determine that we were going to buy that trailer, you know, because it was rare, has a slide, has everything she wants. Um, and I have to talk her out of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. On to the video. Hello everyone, this is a virtual tour of Damon and Aaron Beal's 1979 Safari. Um, we purchased this Airstream, believe it or not, at a Goodwill auto auction about eight years ago. And it's mostly original, except for the carpeting on the inside. It still has original curtains, fabric, uh, appliances, so we're going to give you a quick tour. A couple of things to notice on the outside, it still has its um, badge from 1987, South Dakota Rally. And it also has a dues paid sticker on it, um, which we think was something very short lived in the club um, because they talked to Cindy Reed when she was still in the office and she had no recollection of the club doing that. All right, so we're gonna go on inside now. And we got a little tour guide to help us. Hi, Peppa. Uh, <laughs> All right, now we're inside the Airstream. Again, you can see the curtains are original. You have to love the 70s decor, the paisley, the greens, the yellows, a little bit of the oranges thrown in. Um, the original clock, digital clock, still works. And it even has a switch on it that you can turn the display off to save the battery. Over here, the uh, previous owner was a woodworker and he made this custom little cabinet. It has a catalytic heater in here and just some storage down in here. And it even has the original opening doors. Now we're going into the galley. Now we're in the galley. Again, another gaucho in here. This trailer actually sleeps quite a few people. Uh, the sinks and the stove, again, all original. A little spice rack behind. And the overhead with the tambour. They all still work and function and aren't ripped or torn. Uh, Previous owner again did another custom woodwork shelf here. Um, that makes it nice. Maybe a TV shelf at one time. We don't know. It's got the short little fridge with um, storage above it. And that wonderful 70s wicker. And now into the bathroom. has what we believe is the original toilet and I don't know if you how good it, it's this will come out in the film but it still has the original pink and yellow flower wallpaper all throughout and even the shower curtain is in the same pattern the pink and yellow flowers and a little linen closet there storage below the toilet again with more of the pink wallpaper a little medicine cabinet there and a big full closet with plenty of storage well we hope you enjoyed our little tour of our 79 safari and Pippa, I hope I didn't bore you too much. Thanks for watching. That's incredible. Fabrics. Wow, I have to say that upholstery and <laughs> wallpaper was the highlight of that video. <laughs> you either and love amazing. it or you don't. <laughs> great shape, really great shape. Amazing. It's a good shape. It's actually a very good shape. The only thing that's missing was the disco music. You know, <laughs>
<laughs> and the mirror ball. <laughs> yeah. What was the length on that? It's a 23 foot safari. 23, it's absolutely gorgeous. So it is <laughs> missing. They yeah. actually had a hanging ch chandelier light in the middle. There's two metal <laughs> hooks, you know, with that chain. Um, yeah. yeah. It is missing that. So I keep telling the wife we'll find it one day at a garage sale, but there's something 70-ish oh, yeah. that we can put back in there. So Damon, how's this goodwill thing worked out? How did that, what, what is that? How, well, it was an auction and it was being uh, auctioned and you heard about it? You can it? donate vehicles to goodwill. Right. Uh, and here in Indianapolis, they have weekly auto auctions where they auction off the stuff. And my wife, you know, she's always on the search for Airstream. She, she saw it. There was one little picture of just the corner of the outside. Um, so we actually went as a joke thinking it was gutted or wrecked or something. Um, and we get to the auction and, you know, as soon as she steps into it, she says, we're buying this thing. So, um, which buying at a Goodwill auction is interesting too, because if we didn't know that, oh, you have to have a $500 cash deposit when you get there to get a bidder number. And so, um, but we ended up taking it home, so. How many bids were there? Um, there were three other people bidding on it, but I don't think they knew. I mean, I think they were just buying a trailer. They didn't, yeah. they weren't buying an Airstream. That was very cool. Yeah. It's like a time machine. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. Yeah, except for the the carpet. Um, yeah, we can't think of anything else that's been replaced. It's a nice shade. It's a very nice shade. Can I ask about the gaucho? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, how how big is the gaucho fold out in here? The one in the galley, when you fold it out, you have like six inches between that and the, the counter. So is it a What's full? What's the total? Do you know what the total uh, um, width width dimension is? No. Not off the top of my head. Okay. But both the front and the back are the, are the same size. Oh, there's two. Yeah, the, the, the one in the front oh. is also a gaucho. Okay. Okay. We have his nurse. She sleeps in the galley and I sleep <laughs> up front. <laughs> yeah. She wants to be closer to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Um, can I, I'll comment on the, on the gauchos because I've been trying to work on this for my, uh, for my uh, Curtis Wright. So it seems like most of the gauchos are either 76 or 78 by 40. And that's what we've got in the Caravelle. But we landed up buying an Ikea five inch thick mattress that's uh, the right length. But instead of being 40 wide, it's 53 wide, uh, 53 wide and uh, 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 queen size sheets fit on that and it's still you can pull the gaucho out a little bit further and it works really really well so just just fyi so is, does anything support that mattress on the outside you know it, it it overhangs by just a few inches but like in the caravel you can actually pull the um you can pull the gaucho a little further than it needs to be pulled and it'll still have the support that it that it needs to have because in the yeah i have a 65 caravel but mine only pulls out to 48 inches well then that 54 will easily you won't have any problem with it yeah. and so that and that that those uh I don't know if, if Ikea still has that exact one, but they're super cheap. I mean, they're 130 bucks or something for the mattress and it folds and you can actually, and we fold it up and put the back piece against the wall and the other piece up towards it. And it's got a zipper between them and, it, and it's got a nice heavy canvas cover on it. And we actually just put like one of those uh, terry cross, uh, Jersey. Oh, a jersey cloth um, full uh, queen size sheet over it and that's how we leave it all day and then we pull it out and at night we put a queen sheet on it and it's it's much more comfortable than the 40 inches that we had before oh, yeah that's what we're trying to figure out <laughs> yeah have a look at our kids got those those uh, mattresses and and they and originally I had the four inch thick one from IKEA which was 40 inches wide and going to the five inch was just much more comfortable actually. 
Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. So, lives like a futon. Right. Yeah. When you're when you're asking about the uh, size of the vets, I have a '73 Overlander. Airstream and it's it has uh, the twin gauges in it. They're about eight inches narrower than a, than a standard double bed. And they're about uh, seventy six inches long. And they and they slide and they slide out they slide out with no support on the end of them. That's all I got to say. I'm just uh, you know ours is the width is is I was trying to get a little bit more width out of the length is fine but the width is what we were yeah we'd with. like to share it but uh -huh. it's and ours front end instead of another gaucho has been converted to a dinette uh -huh. and we love the dinette so we only have the one gaucho no it's so, definitely it's definitely a shortcoming of the of the airstream when they do that yeah. yeah. Tight. It's really tight. We just like, could I have three more inches? <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot. Three inches really means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> any more, any other questions? Um, I have a question from an earlier presentation, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, your screen name's Bengal, but I didn't get your, your real name. You had all this great knowledge about the solar, your uh, solar on your Tundra pickup, and I just was wondering if I could email you or learn more about that, how you got all your solar. You're on mute. <laughs> You're on mute. Okay. No, you're back on mute. My name is Dan Engel, E-N-G-E-L. And I'm on air forums as touring Dan. Okay, I'm on air forums as Habitat Guy. Okay, good. Touring Dan? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And I've got a couple of project threads on there for the improvements to my 66 trade wind and, and other things. Awesome. I did my first rivet a few days ago. I had to replace the pole for my, I have an 86 and 87 classic motor home and a 78 Caravelle trailer and the pole broke and for my tank and I put this post on air forms and I didn't even know it was a rivet till people are like, that's a rivet you need to replace. And I had the rivet kit and I drilled it all out and I found air forms super helpful. So I'll reach out to you. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, we have one more presentation, and it's the Bud and Betty Cooper interview, and then we're gonna um, stick around a little longer. I know it's been a, but I, you know, I have gained so much knowledge in this virtual approach, and when I go to actually to uh, Airstream Rally down in, and we do the, um, the tour open house, because I'm so busy looking at everything, and this is just giving me an opportunity to take notes, so this has actually worked out really well for me. Um, so we have one more video, and then we would like for you to maybe stick around for a little longer, not much longer, and give us some feedback. Okay, Damon, we're ready. All right, so um, first of all, does everybody know who Bud and Betty Cooper are? Yeah. I'm sure the long timers do. Um, he was the first president and actually the creator of the Vintage Airstream Club. Um, so I know a lot of new members have no idea who he is. Um, our best in show trophy is named after him. Uh, that's given away at International. Um, and uh, the Coopers sent me a box of videotapes uh, from old back stuff. And one of the videotapes was uh, this interview and I thought it'd just be nice to share. Um, it's probably a lot of people have no idea who they are. Wally Bob started in the trailer business in 1930. That's according to his own writing, so it must be correct. Actually, he started writing. And then as I, uh, he, he either wrote or purchased a book on how to build a trailer. You yourself make a home-built trailer, and he he per, he published and sold that booklet. It got so that uh, he was taking 200 people at a crack, 
an enormous undertaking, but see, people who had families couldn't join because you couldn't take off two and three months at a time. So it, it was inevitable, and he encouraged the formation of the club that meant that uh, people, we'll say, from a metropolitan area could gather on a weekend and uh, have a lot of fun, the family could join in, and then they go back to work on Monday. Wally was also a shrewd, he had a shrewd marketing feel. And I'm sure that after that first rally, he said, wow, what great press. This has got potential. I, I'm, I don't know whether that was 1% of his feeling or 90% of his motivation, but I'm sure it was there to a degree. I'm sure Wally was a fun guy to be around. And uh, he liked his afternoon cocktail and uh, the, the idea of let's go. Uh, nobody's ever been there. Well, let's go, and they'd all hook up and go. See, that was his, that was his uh, strength. It didn't bother him if they all got stuck in the mud and had to get pulled out. You know, you and I'd go home uh, swearing, boy, we'll never subject ourselves to that kind of disgrace again. He just shrugged it off. That was fun. That's what you tell people about. I got stuck in the mud. Well, we live in a 16-foot trailer, and uh, if you can spend six or eight weeks together in a 16-foot trailer, it's a pretty good sign your marriage is going to last. <laughs> Practically a certification. If Wally were here, I think he'd be pleased. I think he'd be exceedingly pleased with our numbers, how many people get together. I think he'd be terrifically flattered that the name of the club still carries his name. And uh, he'd find traditions alive and well that he's very familiar with. All right, that's it. Thanks, Damien, for bringing that up to us. That's very nice. When was that interview? Um, it said 1997. Yeah, not, yeah, 97. Okay. So the back had been around, what, five years at that point? 90, 92? Yeah. I think 92 is the official Nin formation. Yeah, 92. Okay, so we'd like some feedback, guys. What did you think? Um, I noticed nobody has their mask on, so we're going to be okay with that. Um. <laughs> well, I'd just like to say thank you, the officers of the VAC, for doing this, and I'll give you a big clap, so thank you. I know this is an undertaking with all you and with Damon, so do appreciate it. From my standpoint, it's turned out very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was... We wanted to do something for the club and we realized Loveland was not going to happen and today's the 20th and we said let's put something together and Zoom has become so popular we said well we can do this and um, thank you. Thank you. I, I agree. I, I think you guys did a great job being the, the president so it was hard putting it together but I think Ed and Damon you guys did an awesome job. Sorry I couldn't be there through the whole thing but um working to get this done you guys were awesome and thanks for the rest of the people uh, chiming in today it was great yeah. to see everybody's faces and haven't seen you guys in a long time or have never met you but um i'm rachel Payne. <laughs> if you saw my videos and i'm working today and so i'm actually i'm in a break right now and um i can join in but with the COVID and everything i had to work uh to help pay for bills but um anyway and since i'm here anybody have any questions about my trailer it was a 62 trade win that was in how are the chickens doing <laughs> <laughs> the chickens are doing fine um if you guys didn't know last year i brought my chickens to international uh they made quite a 
big splash, I guess you'd say. <laughs> I think every video they had, they had my chickens on there. <laughs> and um, I still have Violet. The other two passed. Uh, but um, now I have 25 chickens currently. And um, six of them are going to, well, six of them are mine. And 19 are going away for foster. I'm fostering them. So they're going to be leaving here in a couple of weeks. So, um, but uh, actually I was going to do an interview with one of my chickens, but it, it was the time when I did my video that uh, she had to lay her egg and she wasn't really in the mood to be held much. <laughs> so, uh, you know, kind of a thing. So it was just like, okay, well, I guess this ain't going to work. So, but um, anyway, um, I want to thank everybody for allowing me to be your president. So, well, I wish we you, could have done. You know, uh, uh, thank you, Rachel, even though you got kind of shortchanged not being able to represent our group at Loveland. Uh, you still did a good job all year keeping us together. We had our conference meetings and and you were first vice president last year at Doswell. And that was a challenge because of the heat and the chickens and the, everything else going on. But um, so thank you for uh, a great year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate it. Uh, I yeah. thought it was very uh, interesting. This is uh, a, was quite different for us, but I really enjoyed the uh, trailers that were still a work in progress. We can't usually see those things when we have the rally, but I thought that the works in progress were really interesting and a great addition. Perhaps we ought to keep this video going even if we get to go to um, on, have a rally next year. It, perhaps we mm. should do these videos just to stay current with everybody and their pro and their pro and the progress they're making with their projects. Agreed. Good yeah, suggestion. Do, and we really hope that we're able to give you guys another update soon. Um, for those of you, I know you guys were talking um, a few minutes ago about the forums. And uh, for those of you that are on there, we do have a thread on there. Um, I'm not sure if some of you guys recognize us. I know we do have friends on this Zoom uh, call that, that know us, but there might be a few that don't. But on the forums, Tim is Mr. Rivet. I'm Miss Rivet. And uh, we have two big threads going. One is obviously on the 48 and that one is um, 19, I think that thread title is 1948 Liner, a 70-year journey. Um, I wish I could update that title because now it's like 72-year journey. And then we also have one on the um, 60 Free Safari too. But anyway, we're the rivets on the forums and hopefully we can get another update for you guys soon. Um, the, the other thing that I want to share with you guys is that we want to do something maybe every other month or every month, a uh, Zoom. I like the suggestion that work in progress kind of things. We, you know, we're looking for you guys to give us suggestions. Uh, we want to become more um, interactive with the members. Uh, we can do things monthly. And then, of course, we have our yearly um, international that we get together. So we're open to thoughts. You know, um, you can send us a note. We're going to be scheduling this um, kind of a, um, meeting maybe every other month or every month, depending. Uh, and hopefully we can, we, we like to integrate better, you know, in the sense of, I learned a lot. I have several pages of notes here. I'm going to be making a lot of phone calls. Um, and um, I think this really helps us a lot because we all have something in interest. We're all Airstreamers. And we, we, we're committed to our Airstreams. And, and this has helped me quite a bit. Any suggestions, anything that you would like to see? Polishing, maintenance, um, anything that... If you'd like us to get somebody to give us a an over an overview or something that you may be interested De in? Definitely polishing. We've got some polishing ahead of us. So yes, <laughs> definitely polishing. Would you be the first just to come over to your place and help? Um, Bill, I would love for you to come over and help us polish. <laughs> wow, what a service. I I think you have experience, Bill. <laughs> hey Ed. We'd love to have some kind of a, uh, a thing on uh, solar energy, which would be wonderful. Solar energy? Okay. Yeah. Second that. Okay. Lynn? Yeah. Uh, 
Ed, maybe you could get into some more detail about the satin polishing that you're doing on your Bambi. I'd really like to know about that. That the my husband practically, you know, those buffers are hard to handle, and we're oh, thinking, no, why I, are we doing this? Here's your wax <laughs> yeah, wax can, on, wax off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can do a little video on how to do, it, and I can introduce a mother's friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mother's some products and show us your dirty rags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can do something like that. Oh, Actually, I'm going to be doing some polishing now that the weather is warm. I'll, I'm going to go back and do some polishing on it. You know, one, one quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to see more about those low usage uh, electric appliances, the air conditioner that runs on five amps and the uh, furnace that runs on two amps and like that. If we could build a list of uh, components that are known to work well in older Airstreams, that would be really, really handy. I love seeing how some people sort of built them into the existing spaces to kind of uh, camouflage them. I think that's really clever. Yeah, I like that. Um, Lynn, did you have a question, Lynn? No, uh, just a quick comment for you. Sorry. Uh, Ed, was it more difficult to do a virtual open house than it would be in person? <laughs> <laughs> it was challenging a little bit. Because I, I'm at my daughter's house. My wife had plans for this weekend and I had plans. So we sort of had a, okay, how are we going to do this? And um, I said, I'll, I'll travel with you, and, but I have to do this. <laughs> so it was good. I, and actually, I, I it, it turned out to be a lot better than I expected. There was some work behind it. Uh, all the offices helped, and Damon, you, you were critical, of course. But uh, I think what I've gotten out of it is, is, and I think many of us have gotten, what we've gotten out of it has been significant for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, another, another nice thing about doing it this way at a real yeah. open house, someone has to stay at the trailer to show the, your trailer. Then right. you don't get to see all the other trailers. No, so right. this way you get to see everybody's trailer and, and we, it's like we're all in one big group going to see somebody's trailer. And, and, that's, and that's my biggest complaint when we go to you know, open house. I'm trying to show my trailer and I have no time to go see anybody else's trailer. Exactly. That's, that's always an issue. For sure. And another topic that I think would be really interesting, at least for me, is um, replacing the LED lights both inside and outside. Mm -hmm. How to upgrade okay. everything. Good idea. Okay, good point. Energy. Anything else? What 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 was what didn't go right? What what are the kind of things you didn't think go that did go right here? I mean, you know, you, maybe there were too many frames, or the mute button didn't work sometimes. Or I mean, um, I'll, I'll I'll step in here. I I enjoyed the meeting. The fact that it started kind of late went right through my dinner time. That and, and the fact that it ran long didn't really work ideally for me. Yeah, but I know you can't with all the different time zones. It's hard to math match that up for everybody. But I really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm not a big electronics um, technology guy, but I thought this worked well to be able to see everybody's uh, trailer. And I really appreciate you guys putting the effort into it. I agree. I my wife walked in a few minutes ago and said, oh, you're going to have to microwave your supper. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's okay. It's well worth it. I, I uh, a suggestion for future would be to create a time frame. You know, leave time in the end for lots of questions and answers. But, you know, figure, uh, you know, uh, two hours is probably plenty for sitting in front of a computer, you know, type okay. of thing. And, you know, don't leave it quite as open-ended so people know that they can get to their other, you know, obligations or whatever. Okay. Thank you. And I enjoyed it. It was <laughs> great. Everybody trailers. I thought it was a really good, well done. We're, we're Airstream junkies, so we can sit and watch this all day. <laughs> and we don't have any other obligations. There's nothing else to do. What else is new? You're talking Airstream. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Your trailer is on. Yeah, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I, I, I'm sometimes in the study. I don't, I'm retired now, so I, my study is just to do whatever I want to do. And my wife will walk in and say, "You're looking at airstreams, aren't you?" I go, "Yeah, yeah." Leave it just a minute. 
I mean, I spend a lot of time going through Google and, and just doing things like that. And, uh, you, you learn a lot. But right. Anything else? Right. Anything that you think we could have done differently? Anything that um, that we could have changed? Mr. Dennis, I enjoyed your uh, presentation very much. Uh, timing was good with me. Um, I had a good time. I'd have had a presentation for you, but I couldn't get my uh, video put together with. Uh, Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, Damon, I think you did an excellent job. Um, compiling all of the videos and presenting them the way you did. Fantastic kudos on that. Wonderful job. Yes, great job. Thank you. And, and Damon has a full-time job. So <laughs> yes. I really, really appreciate what he's done. That about. wasn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is great his job. job, kudos. This is his night job. Um, okay, I, I think. Um, I think it's a. Ed, can I say something real quick? Sure. Uh, next month, we'll be having, and it'll come out in an email, we will be having elections uh, for the officers and our normal board meeting that we have to, well, we'll have a board meeting, but we'll have a regular meeting we're supposed to have. We'll be doing that next month, so uh, an email will be coming out, and you're more than welcome. We'll also have the same kind of a Zoom meeting like this for you all to participate as we do the board meeting and if you're needing some vac swag that means hats t-shirts patches magnets whatnot flags we are out of the full-size flags but we have the little small three by two by three flags let me know i have the merchandise so if you want some swags let yeah. me know and we'll take care of you and you can buy them off the website too so. yes and uh, and I just like to announce our newsletter is going to change a little bit. We're going to actually going to have a classified section, um, individuals that are maybe selling vintage things that or they want to sell vintage things. We will now have a classified section in our newsletter, and we will send out a note uh, probably a week or so before the newsletter. I I guess Lee will figure that out, um, <laughs> and asking you know in, inquiring whether you have anything you want to sell or that you're looking for. <laughs> so it's going to. Be something a little different. Yeah, I'll say something real quick. Sure. Okay, it's Pat Brantley and Louise. I tried to make a comment after my video and realized that no one could hear me, and then I realized that the mute button was on. So now we figured out how to <laughs> get it all muted. So I just want to say that we did enjoy it very, very much. It's been very enjoyable. Yes, we and, did. Uh, in case anyone was trying to count the stars on the front of our Bambi or the front of our Excella, we have nine that we're proud to display. Wow. We've been around Airstreams a long time. We'll hope to see a long time. down the road and at another open house sometime soon. Thank you. Okay, I guess, Damon, we're ready to close up unless any of the other offices, Lisa, Lynn, do you want to share? Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. I, this was the first time we've tried something like this, and you did a great job heading it up. Good job with the emails no, and getting, in, getting everybody. No worries. I enjoyed it, and even though I'm going to have a cold supper, that's fine. You <laughs> <laughs> can't have a cold supper. No. <laughs> to warm it up so, in the microwave. It's okay. All the um, videos will be on the back YouTube page. So you'll be able to go back and look at them again. And, and Damon, this meeting is being recorded as well, is that correct? Yes, but I forgot to record it when we started. So <laughs> we, got a few, okay. we got a few videos in before I remembered, oh, I didn't hit the record button. So sorry about that. <clears throat> Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay, I guess we're good. Thank you again. All right. You all have a good evening. Bye bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Ha, ha, ha.